In the first 10 years of this century, we have had three major crashes. In 2000 was the dot-com crash, followed by the 2006 real estate subprime crash, and then 2008, the banking crash. The question is, is this next? This is the giant crash of 1929. Every time I listen to those guys on CNBC, I call it bubble vision. They keep talking about the giant crash of 1929. I tell you what, it doesn't even compare to this one coming. So that's why I write and I speak, and I'm very concerned about our futures, our well-being, and the state of the economy. But not long ago, I wrote that the best time to prepare for a crash is before a crash. The biggest crash in world history is coming. That got a lot of news. What's the big news? The good news is the best time to get rich is during a crash. The bad news is the crash will be a long one, which is, for me, good news, too. <laughs> There's something about being old that is good. What I have is I've actually lived through history. The S&P 500 is really the S&P 7, and it's being held up by Treasury Secretary Yellen and Powell. So there's no correlation between the economy and what Yellen and Powell are doing. I said one more thing is that I'm a little strange in that I like crashes. So this next crash is going to be really, really good, but it'll bring down gold, silver, Bitcoin stocks. But the good news is, is a crash is a good time to get rich. The big debate is, is there inflation or deflation? And if you look historically, what's happened today is the nominal debt to GDP is a correlation of M2, the volume of money times the velocity of money. And the reason Yellen and Powell are scrambling is because they've expanded M2, so everybody thinks it's going to be inflation. But velocity of money, which is what Jim Records and I always talk about, the velocity of money is plummeting. People are not spending. So they pump all this money in, prices go up. Meanwhile, the Asians are catching up now that the ports are finally open. So it's a tra it is transitory inflation. But the problem is we're stacked with this massive debt, and all it's done is bump up the stock market and real estate market. The money has not gone into the economy. That's the sad part. So the rich get richer, but the poor and middle class are getting poorer. It is tragic what's happening today. I don't know what it'll exactly be, but you can't keep printing fake money. You know, that's M2. And the velocity of money keeps dropping, but the debt keeps going up. So you and I don't have to go to Harvard to understand <laughs> that's not good. This is going to be the biggest crash in world history. We have never had this much debt pumped up. Debt is the biggest problem of all, but that's called M2, money supply. And the debt to GDP ratio is out of sight. So when it comes down, which it brings everything down with it, and I want to give people the big picture. The reason I don't care for Yellen or Powell, because they're both Marxist. And when I say that, I get nailed. I will read you a quote from Lenin. Okay, this is Latimer. He says, the establishment of a central bank, this is a direct quote, is 90% of a communizing of a nation. That's Yellen and Powell. And the other, other statement from Lenin is, and this is in manifesto here, the best way to destroy the capitalist system is to debauch the currency. I say it's desperate people doing desperate things. As you and I know, this, the stock market, like I said, it's not, it's not the S&P 500, it's the S&P 7. And the separation between the stock market and the economy has never been worse. I'm just disturbed because the money is staying only in the investor market. Every time the Fed does something, the Treasury does something, only guys like me get richer. But the money is not going into the real economy. They're not investing. They haven't invested for years in plant and equipment. So we have massive, massive unemployment and underemployment. And that's why I quote Lenin, the establishment of a central bank is 90% of communism. And the best way to destroy a capitalist system is to botch the currency. That was in 1971 that Dixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So in, in this book here, I kind of woke up in 1972 as a Marine pilot flying in Vietnam. And I went behind enemy lines in Vietnam looking for gold because it was illegal in 1972 for Americans to own gold. When markets crash, it's the best time to get rich. So I, I'm getting very excited about a crash coming because the better stocks will come available. Da, da, da. Unfortunately, Michelle, there will be massive social unrest.
That's what I'm, that's what I'm more concerned about because we have not reinvested. We've, the Fed and the Treasury have only invested in the investor class. They haven't invested in the working class. And the working class is without jobs, without pay, without this. Their 401ks are going to get toasted. And that's why I'm, why I'm more saying I don't like what's happening. I've tuned in to YouTube and all the, the financial markets 24-7. And that, that's one of the best things about technology. This uh, COVID thing really pushed up technology. And I love YouTube. I, 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 get, I listen to some of the most smart guys on planet Earth. And I was, I was listening to Lacey Hunt. And he's talking about deflation. Then I listen to records and he talks about deflation. And Yellen and uh, Powell, who work for the Fed and for the Treasury, they both work for the Fed, which, again, is a communist organization. He'll say so in here. Time to wake up is what I'm saying. You know, most parents say that the kids go to school and save money and work hard. But in 1970, when I graduated from school, a million dollars at 15 percent interest earned me 150000 a year. Now, you could live on $150,000 a year back then. Another thing that's happening, when people's incomes go down, they become dependent. Now, the U.S. government tells us that poverty has been beaten in America. Well, maybe poverty has been beaten, but what has increased is the entitlement mentality, the attitude that the government and other people should take care of me. So anyway, the reason inflation is going to wipe out people is because the average person is a consumer. So they go, they, everybody talks about, I want to... You know, T-bone steak is this now, and gasoline's this, and toilet paper's that, and all this. But that's because Biden and company and the Fed are protecting the bankers. That's why I feel for the working class people, I think it's criminal that our school system is part of Marxism. There's no financial education in schools, and it's not a mistake. So I've been saying this since, I don't know, you know my first book was, if you want rich and happy, don't go to school. This was long before Rich Dad Poor Dad. But today we can see what's happened. And people are still saying, oh, it's because the container ships aren't being discharged in Long Beach Harbor and all that. And I went to school. I can drive those ships. I have a, I have a third mate's license to drive ships and fly planes. But anyway, it's all BS. So the people who are complaining about inflation just know it's because the, the Federal Reserve Bank, the U.S. Treasury, which is Janet Yellen, who was also head of the Federal Reserve Bank, they're as corrupt as they come. They're communists. They're Frickin' communists, and we worship them. This is what's sad. The Fed should have let those guys fail, but they kept them afloat. Every time they made money, it created more debt. It just created more fake money. And America got poor. The deficit kept going up because they had to have that toing and froing. Trickle's dilemma, plus Schumpeter, which is that capitalism is destructive. The whole system is based upon if a dollar comes in, they've got to lend it out. And the collateral is going bad now. So that's why he says it's going to be deflation, not inflation. But the Fed has got to keep the illusion that there's inflation.